Okay, so now that I have my tractor beam asset, I can work with it a little bit using my compositing skills. I can use a little internal um, clone stamping to help soften some of the seams. But then, that looks pretty good. Then I have to think, what else do I need? Well, I want not just the, um, the church to glow, I want its roof to kind of open up. So I need to make a roof asset as well. So here's my church. I'm going to go ahead and make a duplicate of my church. and then move in and select this roof just roughly. If I want it really clean, I can use the polygon lasso tool, which is right underneath the regular lasso. And that's just for hard edge shapes. You just click at each point. Since I want the roof to look kind of mechanical, am I going to worry that, worry that that tree is there? No, I am not. That's fine. Now the top edge should all be the same because it's all its own asset or its own layer, right? So I'm going to duplicate this as a separate. I'm going to call this the church roof. Okay, now I'm going to make a duplicate of that. You think of all the different variations you want. And with this church roof, I'm going to select, this is problem solving differently for everyone. I'm going to select the empty space outside of the roof Oh, it did have more in it than I wanted it to. So let me delete out this background. All right. Now on this one, I'm basically going to Yeah, there we go. So that's the shape I want. I'm going to uh, do a color overlay with black because this will be the empty space that's revealed when the roof opens up. But of course, then I don't want to have the empty space doesn't show this tower. So I'm going to cut that off of this layer. So I, it can be helpful to layer and keep yourself organized. And to kind of save as you go, make sure it's saved as something different than the original file that you're getting your assets from. So assignment five assets, command S to save. So I'm going to call this one the uh, empty church, right? And that needs to go underneath my roof. And now my roof, I need to work on rotating. And just to be safe, I'll make a duplicate. Make sure I don't have a selection. Make a duplicate and rotate it. Now it's tricky. How do you rotate a roof open? It's not going to open that way, right? It's going to kind of do that. <laughs> and then it's going to stay at the hinge. So I'm going to use distort and skew to get it where I want. I'm not going to use warp because I don't want the roof to look loose. Right. Okay, now the tricky part is I need to delete the church tower from here so it's not in the background on these layers. and delete it from here. And then I have to see if it's, there we go. I also need to kind of delete it from the backdrop even, because my church got merged into it. So I'm going to use a little bit of clone stamping and just roughly cleaning up. In fact, I'll show you a new tool here, which is even easier than clone stamp. It's called the spot removal tool. Looks like a band-aid, spot healing brush. I'm going to do it at smaller size, content aware, 
and I basically just paint and it, the computer will sample from what's around and kind of clone stamp in what it thinks makes sense. Now it's not always great, but that will be passable, right? As the church's roof opens up a little bit. Like that. Now I'm going to call this roof intact. I want it to stay that way. And that's going to stay put. But now the roof copy, it's this becomes an animation cycle. So it's starting to open up. Then I make a duplicate of it, and I'm going to rotate it more using distort. Lift that tip up. Lift this back, lift that back. So kind of tilting it in the perspective I choose. And not being too subtle about it either. What's nice about having the different layers is you can see how it's very clearly opening up, right? From, from here, to here, to here. Okay, and then my last one, three steps is good for a GIF animation. I'm going to flip it the other way. So now it's going to be coming out at us from the other side. And then, of course, I'm going to lose this now. I'm seeing the underside of the roof as the box opens. And then I can duplicate that and do one more where it gets a little bigger again. And then distort. Oh, that got too distorted. <laughs> well, let's see. Yeah, it's not terrible. This is going to be well the beam's coming out of it anyway, so that's going to be okay. All right. Whoops. So now I've have my roof assets, like how that puppet's going to move. Rotate a tiny bit more. What is the computer doing here? Just like that. So now I have all those pieces I need in order to close the roof, right? And so because the roof is here, I'm going to make, and I have a little motion cycle here, I'm gonna put these all in a folder together. And I'm gonna call it the church roof group. And that's important to pay attention to, what's going on with that. Right? And then for as I set up each frame, I decide how open is it, and how empty is it? And the default will be that it's just an, the empty space underneath. Make sense? All right. So even just something really basic like that, you have to really think through. What are the assets that are needed? And then this is going to go with it. Let's clean it up a little bit. I like kind of the flaring that's happening, so that's not too bad. So that's my extreme, and then what will it be with the church open? Will look like that, right? So now I have to make it so it's glowing, just so the church starts to glow before the big trapdoor beam shoots out of it. So what I can do for that is I can take this empty church layer, I can rasterize it so that the color overlay is now just pixels, right? I can duplicate it and start making it glow using color overlay. So I'm going to pick kind of a, a bluish white 
as the solid color for it. And then I'm going to add an outer glow to it. That's a little more subtle than that. So you get to play with the opacity of it, the size of it, the spread of it. This is all. There we go. How noisy it is. It's kind of nice for things to be noisy in a GIF animation because it's going to be limited to 256 pixels anyway. All right, and then I can duplicate that and I can change it a little bit. I can brighten up the color overlay on my duplicate and I can extend the outer glow. And this is still just building assets. I can make it bigger, spread it out a little bit more, and even give it an inner glow eventually. And then I'm going to do one more, so duplicate it, and then play with these effects. And you see how they all kind of, when they're all turned on, they double up on each other. So it's just like opening the roof, but now it's just adding a glow. And that, with the roof on it, you know, will make sense with the big tractor beam shooting out. That won't seem like such a shock. Okay. So now I've got some glowing assets. So I might move these together into a group using the folder and call this uh, the internal glow of the church. It's like Pandora's box. Okay, now I get to animate the tractor beam. Or not animate it, just set up the assets for it. So how do I do that? I'm going to work backwards. So make a duplicate of the tractor beam, turn off the one on top, and then shrink the one underneath. So I can do this a few ways. First, I can take the opacity down a little bit. And then I'm going to use transform. and shrink it down a little bit. And this is tricky because I need to keep it always coming from the same place. So actually, instead of transform scale, I might do transform and then uh, puppet warp, actually. So how can I do that? I say, uh, uh, that this might not work. It might be too much noise. Yeah. So I basically want to pin it right here, pin my puppet warp for my glow right there so that doesn't move at all. But then I can start moving these back, these corners. And that's going to be too wavy. All right, I'm just going to do a straight. That will work really well with my creature, but not for something more mechanical. So instead, I'm just going to do a straight transformation. There we go. I'll use warp and start bending it here down so that the bottom where it touches the church mostly stays in the same place. There we go. So about there, then I'm going to erase out that edge. So you have to think of kind of the whole history of the compositing of it. This is as the glow kind of shoots out. So it goes from that to that. And then I can do that again, duplicate it, turn off the one in front, turn the opacity down a little bit, and shrink it down, and put it back. And then erase out. Maybe at a slightly lower opacity this time. It's tricky to animate light <laughs> and know how it should work. Okay, so that's the start of it. So then it goes boom, boom, boom. Want to work on this one a little bit. Let's shave it down. Narrow it a bit. 